All right, warriors, welcome back. Before we get started, we're gonna do a breathing exercise. It's gonna take five seconds, five Mississippis. We're gonna breathe in deep, hold it, release together. Have a couple of laughing moments. Maybe even a gut buster. <laughs> but before we do that, we wanna make room. We've been through enough shit. We don't need to add more to it by keeping you stuck in a fucking loop. It's, tar it, 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 it's time to start thriving. It's time to start taking the right medicine so you can make strides. Not get so hung up on how a message is delivered, whom it came from, Feelings getting in the way. You know and I know. I've had enough of this shit. Let's take five seconds and make some room. Come on, let's do this, man. Release slowly. <laughs> All right. Shake that shit off. You know, narcissists give each other expert advice. It's hilarious, though, and I'm going to give you an analogy to catch up, you know, to kind of get an idea. I had a manager at one time, worked for him for years. This dude's high functioning, but let me tell you, his focus was more on resources, very materialistic rather than concentrating on just destroying people. That was something that would happen covertly once in a while. But as long as you were making him money, you were his hero. You were under his protection. But every now and again, he'd stretch his fucking neck out and show himself. I'll give you an example. We, I would take a side every month, 10%, and I would reinvest it into the guys just to build up that motivation, that mentorship and, and uh, let them know that I had gratitude for their hard work for the month. Keep in mind, I'm not a manager, but as someone working in automotive, whether it be in sales or repair, each individual advisor is a manager. It's a business within a business, right? So I would motivate as he would get them winded he knocked the air out of their sail, I'd be right behind them, motivating them. Kind of worked out for a number of years, as long as we were all making money. But every now and again, he wanted to be the coach. He was bad cop, I was good cop, is what it came down to. I would take the guys out on a deep sea fishing trip, paid for. If they wanted to give a gratuity to the deckhand and the skipper, that was fine. I did it so often, I had a dedicated skipper to me out in the Gulf of Mexico. And this guy liked me so much that when he gave up deep sea fishing as a skipper, uh, uh, a guide, he never sold his boat. Anytime I'd call him, he'd still take my crew out. And I asked him one day, I said, dude, I heard you retired. You went back into the oil field business. He says, yeah, 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 I did. I said, do you still guide? Because I, I heard you don't guide anymore. He says, well, I don't, but I do for you. Because you're good people and you're friends. He said, man, it's not even a job when I go with y'all. It's fun. I want to share that with you because the manager of the shop I worked at at the time was never invited. He was, everyone's invited once. After that, we'd schedule the run and he felt he needed to be personally invited differently, I guess. But because it wasn't his idea, he surely wasn't going to act like he was going to throw himself at it. He needed to be better. He went and bought him a boat. Badass contender, 32 foot. Center console. Invites everyone in the shop to go fishing. Schedules it. Insists. I go also. It's a fine. We go out there, check this out. He launches the boat, we get in the boat, gear and all. 
Then he goes to the filling station. Before he fills up, he says, okay, everybody's going to pitch in for fuel. We're kind of like, oh, shit. Well, damn, okay. And however much fuel we'll get would dictate how long we fish. Like, okay. Man, we no sooner get out there, we're like, man, screw this. We're not having too much fun. He's worried about you knifing his side of his deck, cutting, cutting bait, worried about you getting blood on the deck, worried about fish guts, worried about... It's just got to be a tantrum everywhere you turn. We get back. We decide we're all coming back. We get back with what fish we had, right? He holds the fish ransom. Y'all, I'm not lying. The man holds the fish ransom from everybody, all the employees, and says, y'all got to help me wash and wax the boat before you can get the fish. Everybody left. The aha moment that everyone needed to see was truly who it is that they're being led by. You see, warriors, you can't go warning people about folks. They need to see it for themselves. And a narcissist will reveal their own juggler. In such a way that you couldn't explain it the splenaceous means nothing. Seeing it, oh, you just had to be there. And the reason I tell you narcissists give each other expert advice is because, check this out. While we were fishing, I made an observation. And I noticed <laughs> some of the guys that had never been deep sea fishing before would get out there and get on a tuna, a ling, a grouper, you know, something big as you on the other line. And boy, they'd fight that thing and fight that thing probably for every bit of a half hour, 20 minutes and bring that fish in. Man, they're so elated, but your arms are like jello. You can't move. You sit down though. And as everybody, it's like everyone is paying attention to who's caught fish, who hasn't. Because if you caught fish, now you get to be elevated to a position of advisor. Jokester, because you don't caught one. Your fish is in the cooler. And this is what I mean, expert advice. This could have been your first trip, but you'd be the first one to tell them, real, pump that rod, real. Don't give up. He's gonna spit the hook. Because all of a sudden, they're an expert in fishology kitchen. <laughs> Warriors. We have to learn to laugh, because check this out. I'm gonna open your eyes to another epiphany. And I read this somewhere, I can't take credit for it, so I'm repeating it. <laughs> we have dominion over the animals, don't we? Do or do we not? We can domesticate them, we can enjoy watching them out, living their life freely. Freely being the operative word here. Because we are the only living creatures on earth that have to pay to live. Warriors, we can learn a lot, but one thing is for sure as we ponder these kind of questions is this. Mistakes can be forgiven. Broken trust, never. You'll, need, you'll never be able to shatter a mirror and put that bitch back together ever again and see a perfect image. And with this awareness, it saddens your hearts to understand that at one time you were operating blindly. And now that you see, it saddens your heart to see the amount of dysfunction around you. It's not a fear anymore. And when you start to see what I see, that's when you know you've reached the plateau of your healing.
You don't wish them well. You don't wish them harm. Just wish they'd leave you the fuck alone. You see, now... You kind of grin a little when folks you hear talking about they're born again. Talking about their second, third, fourth baptism. Look at me. You're one of the few. Anointed with the awareness of the dysfunction around you. You're not defenseless. You're the one being feared. You're the one that in your disparity, your naive walk, you are being harvested, trained, mocked, and now you're truly born again. How does that feel? And I know y'all been through enough shit, so I'm here to lighten your hearts, ease some anxiety. I don't want y'all thinking y'all getting computer hacked or your phone's getting fucked with. Y'all have a team, a support team. And with their discretion and moderating the comments, the remarks, looking after my back, keeping me safe, scheduling coaching calls, doing the background checks, keeping us from remarking shit that maybe later we'll regret, deleting trolls and misfits, trying to cause confusions or ridicule you or mock you. See them get deleted forever. Warriors, I'm telling you this because I don't want you adding to the self-mind screwing that happens when you're going through this. Can't nobody make this shit up. But if I don't communicate it with you directly, then how are we going to teach each other how to communicate? See, it's in the details. I can't tell you or expect you to meet me somewhere and not provide you the roadmap. Many of you are provided the roadmap and you fail yourself in looking for the details because now it's time to look at where the gas station stops. Where are the hospitals on the way? Where are the delays, road closures? Warriors, all of this is important to operate like a warrior. Strategic. Many of us are so self-taught. Look, I'm going to tell you something. It's almost like I remember it vividly. Like I learned to walk, talk, take a shit in a commode. All at the same time. It happened right about the time. I found a hairpin. A bobby pin. And stuck it inside an electrical outlet. I never knew I could pop tall so fucking quick and become a, a raging talking adult. But it happened. Oh, it happened in the jiffy, I'm going to tell you. I took charge. You get it? <laughs> some of us had to have some more snaps than others to grow up. You didn't ask for it. The responsibility was just thrown on your back. Many of you have been raised up and groomed to be son husbands hard pill to swallow but you see the obvious now can't hide from it and many of you if you ask them directly they'll tell you of course they feel entitled 
to you taking care of them? Ask them. Nah, if you really blown the fucking bridge up, don't you do it. Don't you do it. <laughs> but if you if you on the way out, like you high stepping it, you got an exit plan already, or you ain't affiliated like that, ask them the questions. It's gonna blow your mind. They go to admitting shit. They even look at you like, well, I thought you knew that. That's why many of you that were in long-term relationships, they want you to be their friend, their BFF. Because strategically, they planned on you still supporting them in some kind of fucking way. You done blowed the bridge up? Freaked them out and shit? Because <laughs> you were the backup plan. Now back your ass up into a different wardrobe. Because you're fixing to be fresh. You feel me? You got this. You're badasses, and I'm proud of you. Thanks for your support, warriors. Thanks for this badass walk on the beach. It was more fantastical than anything. Now get your asses out there now and it today. Shit. I wish a bitch would. <laughs> Y'all get out there knowing it now. I think I'm gonna go scuba diving. I think I will. Y'all, get out there and own it. You're supposed to be leading, not following. Narcissists know. Now go out there and take charge. Namaste, Warriors. Oh, and I've been counting down.